Hi Vogue, I'm Peter Mullier, uh, creative director of Alaya. Today I'm showing you my house and my home in Antwerp, Belgium, and I'm showing you a few of my favorite objects and things that I adore. We're standing here in my kitchen, and one of the things I love the most around me is one, the view of Antwerp behind, and two, is her. I like the idea that she welcomes everybody that comes to the apartment. It's a large ceramic that I found in Brussels on the flea market. And the guy from who I bought it told me that she was always in the entryway of a building built in the 1950s. So I immediately fell in love with her. I gave her this position in the kitchen as a warm welcome to everybody that, that arrives. And I love that she blends together with the travertine of the kitchen. She's important, but she's quite delicate. And that I like. So why don't you come with me and I'll show you a few of my other objects. So I would like to show you here a collection that is very dear to my heart because it's based on a friend of mine who gave me my first bracelet ever. I'm not a big jewelry person, but in, in bracelets, there's something very beautiful, especially for a man. The first one I ever bought was this one, a Mexican bracelet done by an architect that's called Antonio Pineda. It's made in the 1950s and it's actually a bracelet that is made for a woman to wear here around the arm. There's something about when you work with your hands like we do in fashion. I like the idea that we embellish our hands. These are our tool. Even nowadays we don't think it's a, it's a tool anymore. Hands for me it is because I still sketch, I still make, I still develop with them. And I quite like the idea that you put a bracelet on, it gives them strength. Gives also something to play with. I'm not a, a nervous person, but I, I, I quite like to play with it, take it off. Uh, actually, mostly when I, when I arrive in the studio for a fitting, I take the bracelet off and I put it in front of me and I look at it. And then when the day is done, I put it back on. So this is the reason why I bought this apartment 10 years ago. It's because of the view on the historical center of Antwerp. For me, it represents the real sense of what luxury is about because it's unique. Uh, there's not many views like that here. It's just perfect. So I'm lucky to wake up with it, go to bed with it. And it changes every minute with the Flemish sky. We have the light now. We're very lucky because it's, it's uh, nearly spring light. But even in winter, uh, the view together with, with, with a very dark light is just breathtaking. And I see it as, as maybe the most important artwork uh, that I take care of because it looks like a painting that evolves constantly. The garden, come, I'll show you. Unlike fashion, gardens take time. So we planted everything with small plants. We weren't uh, snobbish to, to buy big plants immediately. We gave them time to grow. So now it's nearly 10 years that I have the garden and this is the state now. In another 10 years, everything will be green all around. But uh, we have to wait, and there's a beauty in waiting. So from all the garden, we only kept two things that were original. It's a pine tree, a very simple pine tree, and a pine tree on the other side. The original architect of this house is Paul de Meyer. What is interesting about uh, de Meyer is that he cut this tree himself. He was in love with the cathedral, which you see in the end. So his idea was that since he had a big renovation project on the cathedral in the 80s, 90s, the idea of one of his masterpieces or one of the most important things he did in his career, to frame it with something natural was important. So he could look from the living room up to what he did. And I like the idea of that. I like the idea that an architect that normally controls everything in life, where everything is mathematical, just chooses to take something natural and tries to control it, but it will never be controlled. So this is John John. He's my best friend, my companion. We're talking about objects, but it's not, of course, he's not an object. I think he's much more important than that. He's family, pure family. As me, I'm lucky to live here. John John is very lucky to live here too, because he sometimes feels like a, a lion when he's here. And he loves to crawl into this and just look at the city. John John is actually American. We rescued him from Georgia when he was three months old. I saw an advertising of him and I immediately said, oh God, I, I love this dog. And since then, he's been traveling the world with me. He's been working with me. He's been cooking with me, sleeping with me. He does everything I do. We called him John John because when he was small and still now, I thought he was as handsome as John F. Kennedy Jr. Come John. 
So, when we moved into this apartment, I was thinking to leave everything empty. And, and a very good friend of mine visited us the first year where we had dinner on that big uh, concrete table. His name is Sterling Ruby. He was obsessed with the apartment and the textures, uh, the roughness of, of, of that sort of beauty. And six months later, there was a FedEx packet in front of the door, and this was in it. So it's a bronze heart and it's signed on, on the back. Congratulations on your new house. I made this especially for this wall. It changes color during the year because it's bronze. So it will become green. And I love the idea of the heart shape that starts crying. But from all artworks uh, that we take care of, I think this is the, one of the most important ones because I always look at it since I work in the kitchen, that's the only piece I look at it the whole day. Since I love Sterling and his wife and his family, it's important. This is our library. Books for me are maybe more important than artworks or objects. The most important one for me is, wait, where is it here? Is this, this one. It's the only thing I have for my grandfather. When he passed away, unfortunately, at a very late age, um, that's the only thing I wanted from him. And it's a book from 1951 on a concrete convent built by Le Corbusier. It's also the first time I saw what you can do with concrete. I keep it very dear to my heart. It, actually, it, I, I've put it there, but I should put it next to my bed. It tells me a moment in my life where uh, everything changed from being quite classical to seeing stuff like this at his house and thinking, oh my God, there's much more than just being classic and calm. It also shows that you can do big things while still staying humble and, 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 and human. So I treasure it for the rest of my life. So let me show you in the office a few more objects that make my heart beat. Come with me. So, I wanted to show you guys this one. It's a piece of radical design. I just couldn't leave it because it represents everything that I like in, in, in architecture and in, in design. Basically, what we see here is just a piece of aluminium and an inner tube of a, a tractor. As you look at it in the first glance, you don't even know what you have to do with it. There's nothing utilitarian about it. It's just nearly a sculpture. People who come and visit me think it's very strange and it's always good in first impression when things are strange and you have to think about it. So this one, I like it a lot. So this is a studio where I work together with the Alaya team mostly. It looks very minimal now. Normally it's not at all. It's chaotic. There's things everywhere. But at least this gives a, a nearly a white canvas to explain you and show you mostly one of the most important pieces of clothing I have in my wardrobe. It's a piece of RAF of 2001, and it's part of the Manic Street Preachers collection. And it's a collection that was very important for RAF's career and RAF's brand, but also for me, because it's at that time where I learned about him. It's a piece I wore often, really, really often. And, and, and I think if I should keep one thing of my closet, that's the only one I would keep. It's extremely simple. It's a bomber with patches on top. And again, it, it shows that with less, you can do so much. And now it's nearly 23 years later and I still wear it in, in, during the winter. So the zipper broke, uh, I washed it a couple of times, but it's for me, my favorite piece ever. You always meet one or two people in your life that pushes you forward. And I think for me, Raf is, is, is definitely that person that took me and pushed me, pushed me, pushed me to always do better, to teach me that you have to be curious all your life. So welcome to another part of the studio, which is actually my personal office. I would like to end our little meeting with three objects. I quite like the idea of having uh, objects with me or in my pocket or in my pocket of my, of my coat. The first of it is a miniature work of César, a French artist. It's from the 1970s and it depicts uh, a female breasts. What I like the most about it is that it's done in two metals, copper, and bronze. The emotional thing about it is that I wear it on every show. As Dina Laya, uh, César gave him a, a real-life sculpture of the breast. When you come to visit us in the offices, 
it's that sculpture that um, you see the first. So I like the idea that every time I do a show, I wear a little piece of him on me. The other two are these. It's a pre-Columbian piece of a necklace that somebody gave to me. And the other one is a little bronze bunny that was back in the days an opener for a bottle, but I broke it and comes. I found it in the flea market. Basically, when I when I keep them in my pocket, and sometimes I even hold them in my hand, they give me some strength at moments that I need it. And even just the idea to know that they are with me is already quite smoothing. Thanks Vogue for coming over and visit the apartment. It has been a pleasure to share my environment with you. And in the end, sharing is caring. See you soon. Thank you.